Today we will play with this uh, stuff here. This is a, a bench that we will bring in uh, La Dispe next week for you. Um, there is a router that will provide a Wi-Fi for the course that you can use instead of uh, Edurome or Polito. Then there, is, there are two Raspberry Pis that are shared and free to use for uh, everyone that need it, a shared Raspberry. Then we can also have some Raspberry for each group if you want. If you want. And then there is a Philips U Hub, that is this white thing here, that right now control these two lamps here. And today, what we are trying to do is building a small program in Python to control these two lamps. So we will speak with the Philips U Hub here that provides a REST server, a REST interface. So we'll speak with its REST interface to control these two lamps. So we want to do two things. We want to create a REST client for the U bridge, that is this thing here, and we want to use our client for lighting up the lamps, all the lamps connected to the bridge. Now we have only two of them, but if they were 100, we will control 100 lamps in the same identical way. And showing then, we want to show a color loop, that is, we want to change this the color of this lamp automatically for 10 seconds, and then we will turn off the lamp. Then if we add time, usually we don't have time, we will write another client, a little bit more sophisticated, advanced, with respect to this first one, to control the U, the color, the specific U of each lamp, of a specific lamp that is connected to a bridge. So, First step, create a REST client. Second step, use the client to turn on the lamp, show a color loop from, I don't know, green up to red and vice versa for 10 seconds, and then shut down, turn off the lamp. Then I will probably show you another client and we'll, I will put on GitHub another client for controlling the U, the specific U of a specific lamp. Hmm? that is connected to the bridge. For, just a notice, for more advanced use of the Philips U, you can also rely on dedicated Python packages, like we did with um, Telegram one month ago. For example, this one, this PU, is a Python package, a Python module, that you can install with pip that is quite feature complete, compatible with Python 3 and so on, to control various things with the Philips U. And you can install with pip install by you. And you can use it for more advanced, it's more advanced than the version that we will deploy and realize today. But today it's also a way to show you how to create a REST client you should know how to create a REST server. Now we can create something that call that APIs from the server. And I, I already put on GitHub another example that uses our, our REST client really similar to uh, the one that we had, we, we create today, that is here. This is called this Python Z-Wave. This Python Z-Wave perform more or less the same thing that we will do today, turn on something, but it uses not the Philips U Hub, but this Raspberry, for example, that is a Raspberry that create a network, an home automation network, wireless home automation network that we, will, we have in, uh, in Ladispe, that is called the Z-Wave. And so we, with this program, you can control using this Raspberry as a bridge, the equivalent of this, but for the Z-Wave network, and it's already on GitHub. So if you want to, to try 
the, this uh, in the lab uh, next weeks, uh, and during the next weeks you can. It's the equivalent of today, hmm? just to have. Yes, and the result of what we did today will be uh, on GitHub as usual at this address. So let's start from here. We need to create a REST client, so we need to look at the Philips Hue APIs. So to, to, to see the Philips Hue API, you need to, let's go see this. You need to um, log in, register before, and here there is a getting started guide. So for example, uh, you can learn how, to, how the U system works, basic concept. There is the bridge, the U, the, the, the hub. There is the lights, various type, and so on. There is a reference to the protocol, to the specific protocol that this uses. This use a protocol that is called ZigBee. In particular, it uses a profile upon ZigBee that is called Smart Lightning, that is, as the name said, for lightning only, is optimized for lightning. And this is something that the bridge uh, does. You can interact, you interact with the bridge and then the bridge convert your command to their specific package in the um, ZigBee protocol and interact with the lamp. So this is the access point for the entire system and is provided as a REST server, REST API. So here you have how this works, the core concept, and so on, and we can have a look to the API. Yes. So for example, for the lights API, we have a series of methods. You see that is similar to what we create last week. So what we want to do, get a light. What is the resource, the light? What is the method, the version, that is 1.0? Then there is a brief description and an example, like we did for the task server, a more complete version in a different domain, but similar. And you see that this, if you perform a get here to this address, with a username that you register on the bridge, you get all these response in JSON format. It's quite long. And for example, here you see that there is a lamp with ID number one that is on, yes, because it's true. It has a brightness value, a U value, and a saturation value that determines the color, the effective color of the lamp and you have some effects applied to this lamp, yes or no, and it's reachable, it's connected, the bridge is able to connect to the, to the lamp, yes, it is. And the type, the specific type, the model and so on, is similar for the second lamp, that in this case is turned off, and the type, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have other API, get new lights, to get only, not all the lights that are connecting to the bridge, but only the lights that are new, newly connected in this moment, connected, freshly connected to the bridge. And with an example response, uh, you can search for new lights, uh, you can get lights attributes, and so on. Hmm? There is a lot of, you can set light attributes, you can turn on, off the lamp, and so on. And this, here you have all the documentation for the Philips U lamp, and this is for lights, then you, if you want, you have schedule, scene, sensor, rules, configuration, info, many other information about this. And all these are REST API. Structured, I don't know, let me take the configuration, for example. Structured in the same way, the URL, the method, the version, and optionally a permission. Parameter, example, or example response, and so on. All this. We will use some of these today to perform our example. But before starting with the example, we need, I can show you this. 
the bridge that right now is published here. That this address provide a simple interface, a web interface to test. Yeah. Not on the EduROM. Um, maybe. Yeah, before seeing this, sorry. Before connecting, we need to create a user, that same, the same user that was present here. This one, this username. This username is unique for each application, so we need to create a username to effectively use the lights, to turn on, off, to perform operation of the lights. Without this username, we cannot do anything on the light. On the GitHub repository, you will find a username already created because the username is 32 charter in number and letters, something like that. So we will, that it should work, I will not delete from the, the bridge. Now we will create a, a, new, a new one. So to create a new, a new user, that is the first thing that we need to do if we want to create an application for the, for the Philips U. We, we can use this interface here that is published from the bridge and we can follow this instruction here. So let me connect to this network that is called MEI course. You will find this network in LADISP. We have two version. And we will provide you the, the password to connect on the network. I will not show it here in video streaming the password. We can, for example, connect to this one, uh, the bug clip, and here we are. This is the web interface that is provided by the bridge here. So we need to register a user. So first of all, we need to send a post command to this address with this body. Yeah, not this one explicitly, but similar to this one. So the URL is API, the message body could be, this is the name of the application, the first parameter. Uh, I can call it um, UPython. And we can say the user name, and that is in class. I will perform a post to this. And it replied to me, error, link button not pressed. So I need to press this the bat a button over here and redo the post. So it gives me a username that I can use. This is to assure that I am here near to the bridge. I have physical access to the lamp to the bridge. I'm not on 100 kilometer from here and I want to control the bridge in the home of someone else. But I have physical access to the bridge. So I take this one and I copy it somewhere. Oh, no, I'll leave this here. And this is also useful for try the other API. So if your application doesn't work, by using this clip API debugger, you can also see if the API works, the bridge works, and the problem is in your application or not. So I will I leave this here to get the username and I open uh, PyCharm. We can create a new project like uh, this. Okay, and I can create uh, One file, they can call it rest. And another file that I will call, for example, you. I will create two modules today. A rest module that is 
for that is for uh, providing uh, a basic uh, um, REST client functionality. And another one that is to give uh, um, the U, the specific U commands. So this model here, I will separate so that we can reuse this multiple time. This here will perform the HTTP calls, nothing more than the HTTP calls. It will be able to uh, read the header, to perform a get, post, put, whatever. And this one, this hue, will import the REST module and will effectively turn on the lamp, use that REST module to turn on the lamp, start the color loop, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea is that we can start writing if main, if name equal main, and we can also, because we know, import rest. We need to import the other package, and we can, for example, um, we would like to interact with the other model saying something like rest send, what we need a method, a DHTP verb, for example, get, then we need the uh, URL, then we need uh, some optional request body, and then we need headers, like uh, content type, JSON, for example. We need this for information at the most. Maybe sometime we just need the URL and the get. Some other time in a post, for example, we need also the request body. We need to send something to the URL. And often we will need also in the post case, for example, a content type. Something to say the body of the request is a JSON file for example, is an XML file, is an HTML file, is plain text, is something. So we need these four arguments at all, at most. So we can start here and define this function. So we, I call it a send function. And I told you that we have a method, a verb. I told you that we have a URI. Uh, a request body that you can call data, and headers, like, for example, content um, type uh, application JSON. And we can set up some default parameter for these four arguments. So, for example, we would like to perform a get without giving the, the method explicitly the method. So we can say that if we don't pass the get the method parameter, we obtain always a get, and that by default the URL is none, so that I can give an error if it is null before providing, performing the request. A data again is none, why? Because in the get, probably data is, is none. The request body with a get verb is always none, and headers will be empty initially, not none, but empty because we need to pass the header in, for, for example, in JSON format or in some type of operation, in some format. So to perform the operation uh, with uh, um, our, our REST HTTP call, we don't write HTTP call from, from scratch, implementing the protocol, but we will use uh, an existing package that is called the request, requests. If you if you go on the internet, you look Python requests, you see that is a quite simple and used that we can try. We 
is a request to serve. Title. It's called HTTP for human. And maybe. And there is the documentation. It's quite simple and Im immediate to use. And here the documentation, it's similar as a structure of this documentation to Flask, the, the website here. And we will use this. So you need to install this with pp install request or by or using the PyCharm uh, settings. I already add on my computer, so I don't need to, to install right now. But we will use this one. So let me connect again to the, the bridge. What do we need to do here? We need to, well, prepare a, a variable for containing uh, the response. We will perform a request and then some, we hope that we add a response here. And uh, then we need to check uh, if uh, the URL is exist. Then we can perform the, the request if the URI exists. The request and uh, get the result, the response. And then maybe return something to the application, in this case, the U module that we'll call this. Okay, so. First of all, we need to prepare the variable. So uh, in a request, we'll return typically a dictionary. So we can create a dictionary, an empty dictionary. Response dict equal dictionary. So we prepare an empty dictionary for storing the response. Then we need to check if the URI that we passed here exists. So we can say if URL is not none. So if we pass here a real URL, this is not none. Otherwise, is none because we declared here as none for by default. And in, in this case, we can perform the request, so try to call the, this URL. And we can have a result equal none. And we can try, and we can, sorry, um, we can say request. We should say requests dot to request. That is the method to uh, perform HTTP request. So this want a method, get, post, put, delete, whatever. Not, not whatever, but yes, more or less. The URL uh, that we need to, to pass, uh, eventually other arguments like data, headers, and so on. So I, I, since we need other thing from this request, I will write, it'll import directly a request. So from requests, import request. So I can use directly this. And we need to pass here the method that I called method, so perfect. The URL that I called URL here and I checked that is not none. So up to now, if we didn't edit anything else, I will get a get request. And if I arrive here, a real URL to, to perform a get request. And optionally, I can have a data, the request body that is equal to this data, and headers that are equal to that headers here. 
So if I have some data, I will pass here. If I don't have, I will pass none, and a request is able to ignore this. And since header is empty, a request is able to ignore also this one. So up to now, I will create, perform a HTTP request. But if I don't pass a proper URL, or if I don't, if I pass not pass proper data, proper headers, or if I'm connected to the wrong uh, network, so I, the, the server, the bridge is not reachable, I need to intercept this error and do something about that. So I can use a try construct in Python that is I. Please try to do this thing here, and then if it gives you an error of some type, please intercept this error and perform this other operation. In particular, requests as a, uh, a request exception that is a generic error that I need to import here. that you need to import here. So if for some problem this is faulty, it will give me a request exception. So here I can, I don't know, print the error or some, do something else. But the program will not stop immediately, will not crash. So you can say, for example, print the error or have some more clever solution. Right now it's, it's okay to print the error. Then we need to we need to check the results that will be here and say if results is not none we will do something. In this case the Philips U will provide us with a response, and many other REST API will provide us a response in JSON format, so we can take this result here and put it in a, um, convert in a JSON. So we can put in this response dictionary, I just created it at the beginning, and say response result, sorry dot json. This is a, a function that will allow to get a function of requests that will get the json representation of this result automatically. We'll get the, the json content and convert it in a dictionary because you you remind that uh, Every object in JSON is a Python dictionary, is converted in a Python dictionary, and every array in JSON is converted in a Python list. In the Philips U API, you see that, uh, I don't know where, in the, um, in the lights that I don't have here, the lights request always return a JSON that starts with an object as we did for um, our REST server last week. So we can take this, and then I need to also do this other operation that is initialize a result to none, otherwise this check, this check will be unpredictable, we can say, because Maybe a request return something, maybe a request give an exception, maybe something happens, so this result should be none to avoid going here, not something faulty content or strange content. And then we can return at the end the response dictionary. So in the worst case, we will return an empty dictionary. In the best case, we will return the response that the Philips U bridge will give us in a dictionary, a Python dictionary. 
Then inside we will have an array, we will have some key, some values, and so on, a normal dictionary. And this REST class, this REST module, we can use this REST module for multiple operation, not only for our u.py operation, but maybe also for, for other things. So let's go back here. We need to import REST, that is the module that we already cre just created. And at certain point, we will perform something like this with here a real URI and so on. And here, maybe some real data. And this will be something like application JSON or something like that. But before arriving here, we need to check what we need to, to do. So we need to, first of all, get the Philips U. and then um, turn on the Philips U with this color loop effect. We will not uh, provide a, a, loop, a color loop effect by hand, by setting, please go green, please go, go red, and now change the color again. But Philips U has an effect, has some effect predefined. One of these is the color loop. It perform a color loop, change color for a certain amount of time, and this certain amount of time for us will be 10 seconds, but you can also stay one hour seeing the lamps that change color continuously as you want. We will stop after 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, we will turn off the lamp, basically. So first of all, we need to set up a base, we can say URI. That is the URI of the bridge so that every URL that we will write from now on will consist only on the final part of the URI. We don't need every time to type HTTP something, only the final part. So the, the base URI is HTTP, um, is that one, 168.0.201. This is fixed, this is Always in the lab, you will have this address for the Philips U bridge, always. It never change. Then we need this username. The username that we created, we can store here in a variable, and it's here. Without this, the Philips U is not authorized. So for example, if I type here, API slash yeah, new developer slash um, lights that is sorry that is if you have a look in the in the documentation that is the API that is the base folder we can say this new developer I tap here will be replaced by by our username and this light lights is please give me all the information the connected lights that you have so we will ask the bridge please give me all the information about the light you have connected right now there are only two connected to the bridge uh, set up in the bridge but if I give this with new developer the bridge say the address is lights and it's a valid address the, the error is unauthorized because the, the new developer username is not valid. I will con, we can try he, here putting everything is always unauthorized. So we need that username that we put, we created before, this long username. And in this case, the response is not error, as you see. This is the description of the two lights. So we have two lights here. We, this is the ID, the identifier of the light, the lamp. The first light is on with a brightness value from zero to 254, that is 254. The U, the U is this. It, this goes, goes from zero to 665,000 uh, and, and something. And the saturation again is from zero to 254. 
The effect is none in this moment. We will change this in color loop. This is a representation of this, this tree value in another format. And there is no alert in this moment and is reachable. So any application that connect with the bridge with a valid username is able to interact with the lamp. And the type is extended color light because you can have these one that are color light, you can have lamp like this, uh, but that doesn't change color and also a LED strip that change color. And the second lamp is identical right now, it's set up in the in same identical way. And there is just yes, a software version, the unique ID, the manufacturer that is Philips and, and so on. So we need this username to perform. This is an operation that we will perform to get the list of all the lamp to apply the color loop mode to all of them. So we need a variable to store this username here. And then we need, since we are operating with the lights only, we need to maybe store also this lights URI, the one that I used in the in the browser. The TS base URI plus uh, API plus username plus lights. That is the same things that I wrote in the browser. When we send a request to this one, we will receive a JSON that is structured in this identical way. So for example, we can try this. So um, we can call this a variable all the lights. And we can say this is a rest, a send. This is a get because I was able to perform this request from the browser by typing the address, so it's a get. So we need only to say that this URL is the lights URL. No other information. The methods is get because it's the default method here. The URI is this one, no need to change. We don't have a request body because it's a get. And we don't have headers because we don't have a request body. And we don't have any particular authentication header or something like that. We have only standard headers that are in, in embedded in the requests um, module. So if we, for example, print these all the lights and we run the program, we should, just to check, we should receive in a not formatted way the same JSON that we the same JSON that we see in the browser. Notice, however, that this, if I run it again, is not a JSON. This is a dictionary because we convert the JSON in a dictionary. So this one that we get is a real dictionary, is not text. So we can use all the methods that are proper for the dictionary to interact with this object. We can get the ID, we can get all the keys, all the values, and so on. Okay, so we don't need to print this. Instead, we need to perform the color loop. So the color loop, uh, I have here a copy of the documentation since I'm connected there. The color loop is uh, get by querying the state of this. Um, yeah, of, of each single lamp. Uh, 
that is one. Yeah, with a put, so it's, we need to, obviously, we, we don't need to get this state here, because the state is the actual state of the lamp, we need to change the state. So in our REST API, we need to update the current state, so we need to put, to perform a put operation on the lamp. So. For, for each lamp, so we will update the state of the, the lights number one, and then we will update the states of the number two, and if we add another lamp, we continue in this way. So here, we need to um, take off the lamp from here, so for, let me call it light in um, all the lights. We have to define a new URI to call that is um, lights plus uh, uh, light, that is the ID of the light plus state, that is the one that I wrote on the browser. And in this case, it's a put, we need to perform a put request and so we need to write something like the rest.send method equal put at the URL to call. And since it's a put, we need to define a body and a content type. So here we can create the request body. The request body for changing, we need to provide a true information to update the state of a lamp, that is, if it's on or off, and we want to be on, no matter the initial state. If it's off, we need to put it on, and if it's on, we need to confirm that it's on, that it will be on, it should be on after the operation, and we need to set up the effect. Hmm? So it's a partial update of this entire state object. We don't care about the color because it's the color loop that will change the color automatically. So here we need to create a JSON that contains two values, on, true, and effect that is color loop. Is this one? Okay. So now we need to, we can perform the, the, the request. We can put to this URL with data equal to body and headers that are equal to. Um, content type application JSON. We need to say that the body is of type JSON. So content type application JSON. This, okay. So put to a specific URL with a specific data with headers. We, since we are defining all the four parameters, we can also skip this to write this. We can also write put URL to call body and this one and content type application JSON, this dictionary. Because we are calling the same methods in the same identical order. So the first parameter is the verb, the second parameter is the URL, the third parameter is the request body, and the fourth parameter is the header that set the content type. Then, so 
this request turn on the lamp and apply the color loop. Then we need to wait for 10 seconds because otherwise it will continue forever. Wait uh, 10 seconds. To wait 10 seconds, we can say, for example, for E uh, in range uh, 0, 10, uh, time dot sleep uh, 1, import time. And then we can print the countdown. This time dot sleep put the program in sleep for this specific amount of second. So in this case, we will we wait for one second. That is exactly what we want. Ten times the sleep of one second. Finally, after ten seconds, we want to turn off everything. So again, sorry, this is wrongly indented. Okay. After 10 seconds, we want to, again, turn off all the lamps. So we need to take all the lamps again for lights as before in all the light. Again, we need to define a new URL to call. That is again lights URL plus um, light plus state as before. So we can also reuse exactly this one without redefining, but since it, it's inside a four, maybe never it never entered here. And we need a new body. Let me copy this. That this time will be much more shorter. That is false. Notice that to turn off a lamp you need to say on false. On true, turn the lamp on. On false, turn the lamp off. And this is written in the, in the documentation, the Philips U. And we can perform the same operation as before. We need to perform a put to this URL with this body with this content type application JSON. And we stop here. If we are lucky, we have set up a username that hopefully is valid. We get all the lights, we loop on the light and turn on in color loop. Then we wait 10 seconds. And after 10 seconds, we will um, turn off on the light. So let's try if it, it works, because there is always the, the dim effect. I'm connected. Yeah. So you see that the color change. We wait for 10 seconds and the lamp will be turned off. Wow. <laughs> so we, we can try again, just to notice that the color loop change. It reminds the previous color, the previous loop, the last color, and start from them for looping. We, we only wait 10 seconds. If we wait uh, five minutes, it go on for five minutes with different color every time. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So, and then at the end, it's turned off the lamp. So it's important here to put this on true because in this case, without this on true, the lamp will not turn on and we don't have the color loop. So one time again. Ooh. <laughs> So 
This is basic interaction with this Philips Hue lamp. All these in, in the documentation of the Philips Hue, you have to, to read. As I told you before, if you need more, you can use this for, you can for sure use this as a starting point if you need in your own project a, a REST client, an HTTP client. This is a simple example. You can use this if you need uh, to interact in a simple way with the Philips Hue. You can extend this if you want, or you can use the, the Python U, the PU package that I show you before on GitHub that perform all these operation in a more complex uh, way. I would like only to, to add here um, let me delete, I don't know, this last three letter in this username. If I run this, okay, the program terminate, obviously, because this is wrong. So the, the U bridge give me an error. And the error is in line 15 here, because this one, this all the lights is the response here and is not anymore a dictionary with all the ID. Is is this one? We don't have an ID. It's not in, anymore a dictionary, it's an array. So the program stops and give me error. We need to catch this error and handle this situation, just, just to know that the problem is here. And so for example, we can here type if, type of uh, all the lights is a dictionary. So since we know that the error are arrays, and the right response is a dictionary, and here we loop on a dictionary, we can basically check if the type of these all the lights is a dictionary. So we can indent all these. And here put, for example, a, basically a else, and here we can print the error, something like error, um, and then we have all the lights, all the lights, for example. So here, if we run this again, you will see that the error is the one that we printed, and this is the, the error unauthorized user that told us that the um, the username here is missing two letters of something. This username is wrong. And if here we restore the, the missing letter, yeah, it should work again. the dictionary, yeah. The content is right. It's type of the lightest dictionary. Yeah. Without this. Okay. And yes, we have to wait a 10 second again and because the type is dict without parentheses. Okay. So the next, so this is the first step here. Let me open again the slides. This step. 
this is the first step here. We have had a look at the U API documentation. We use the card to light up the lamp, all the lamp, in this case too, show the color loop for 10 seconds and turn off the lamp. Then we need to, we would like to use the client for controlling the U. We see of a specific lamp. So we want to control the U of this lamp here, only this one. So we see that the color of a lamp is provided by three value, the brightness, the U, and the saturation of the color that are converted in this thing here, in these values, this couple, this pair of values. We want to control this one, only the U, as an example. So since we don't have time to um, build an entire new project in this way, I, I just created before, we will reuse this rest.py because we need to connect to control the bridge. So let me close this and open this one. So here we have the rest pi that is the same thing that we, with a little bit of comment before, the same thing that we already had, that we developed here. Then we have the u pi, that is again the same code that we developed with another username, it's a different username. I will delete the username that we, we, we have just created. This one probably will leave. Each application will create a new username and it's perfect. Uh, one thing that I didn't say, when you want to use this one, typically it's a good idea to uh, install the mobile application of the Philips U that is available for Android and iOS. Because we have uh, four or five of this lamp plus a LED strip and uh, if, a, if more than one project need to, to use this, it's better if you have a, a unique a username, and if you test with the original application, which lamp are you using, are you controlling? Because maybe you start using the lamp with ID number two, and next the next Monday, another group used the lamp with number two, and then the lamp is removed from the bridge and added again with the ID number 11, and you don't know what is the lamp. So with the, the mobile application, it's much more easy to um, get the ID or your lamp, try if everything works before going uh, in the code of your project and edit to the things. So even that application, even the mobile application, creates a username and set up this username in the bridge. So when you use, uh, we, we will install the, the application, you need to go to the bridge and press the button on the top. Otherwise, your application will not connect properly to the bridge. But this will be in Ladispe, so uh, you, you ask and you can go in the room where there is this thing and press the button. And this is, back to here, this is the, the code that we developed. And then here we have other two files. One is called UAPI test, that is a test application that uses this UAPI. This UAPI is a more complex version of the previous module, of the model U.py that we developed. This define, let me open the test. So the test imports something that is called UBridge. And then it define for starting, use the main function. And the main function say, okay, the bridge, the bridge is represented by this address with this username. That is the same username that we will use in your u.py um, 
program. Then we set up that we want to control the lamp with ID number one, because we want to change the U to a specific value of a specific lamp. So we want to change the lamp, lamp number one. And we want to ask the user for a value from zero to 255, that is totally arbitrary, or type exit. If the user type exit, we close the program. Otherwise, we convert this number from zero to 255 in a, an integer, because as you remember, input will give you always a string. And then we need to compute in some way the U, because we give a number between zero and 255, and we need a value that is um, from zero and uh, 65,000 and something with a, we can say, quite strange representation because for the, the U lamp, uh, zero is red, is the U equivalent to red, Six, uh, 65,000 and something is red again, and in the between, more or less, in 25,000, there is the green, and in between all the other color, or the other hue. So we need to, to perform some operation here. This is one way, it's not the best way to, to compute the color. There are There is an official algorithm from uh, you, from the Philips U, that will allow you to set up U um, brightness and saturation for each lamp. This is um, not precise, but more or less it works. So we need to convert our number, 254, in or three or whatever in something in this range that is much more wide. So we can, we get this number, we compute the U, and then we print the effective number uh, on screen here, and we um, set also to the lamp. So let's try because this is uh, available, this lamp. So insert a number between zero and 255. What do we type? A number between zero and 255. 46. 46. And the lamp number one become this sort of white. Um, and you see that this 46 is this value converted between zero and 65,000. So we type, I don't know, 100. This change a little bit, and zero should be red. Uh, yeah, zero in that is red, here is in the between, so is green. And the maximum, yeah, it should be okay, is red, okay? So here we set up the U, the color, not the saturation, not the brightness of the, of the lamp. So we can say that the, yeah, the brightness and the intensity of the color is always the same. We can have we can say stronger or weaker color, but we change the U only. It's not an intense red, we, not, we can change in an intense red or in a more smooth red for example, by acting on the brightness and the saturation of the U. Here we only change the color, the specific color. And we can type exit and should exit. And the lamp stay in that color. This test uses this U bridge that is imported from this U API. This U bridge is a class that has inside four methods that are get all lights that perform the same operation we did before. Get, ask the bridge for all lights that are registered. Then there is a method to turn all the light off. That again, it's the same thing that we did before for after waiting 10 seconds. And here a generic method to change the state of a light that again is 
the same thing we did before. Before we changed the state to time, one time to turn off the lamp and the other time to uh, apply the color loop. And this application use the last one that is set to you, that perform a put again to the state, to the idea of the, of the lights like before, uh, with a different body that is on true, because we want to turn the lamp on if it's off, and we want to put here in the value associated to the U, the number 20,000 and something, for example, or zero that is green, we see, that is red in this case. It has this four method, and then there is this special method, we can say, they start with this underscore, underscore, and stop with this underscore, underscore. That is, uh, we can say, a reserved method that every classes could have, and this is, we can say, the constructor. The thing that we, when we, when you create a class that is called the U-Bridge, this is automatically called. So when you type this one, when you write this, this line here, U-Bridge something, this U-Bridge something is this, calls these methods. And this method is what it does. It defines the URL, the base URL, like before, the address slash the username slash nothing, the, the address slash API slash username, and build the lights URI, because we want to control the lights, not have anything else. So it adds to this the, the lights portion. And before remove, optionally remove the trailing slash at the end of the string if it's present, otherwise it skip and go on. So this is the representation. And you see that we can say it works if we try with the other lamp just to, to turn on the other one. And we type, um, you see that change. Okay, zero. So we have a red and a green light. And we can, okay, exit this. So also this is, it will be on GitHub. Also this code, probably tonight. So one more thing and then we can go home, I promise. So this, we can say, complete this, um, the Python U lecture, I would like to remind you that this is the address of the API that you need to register and log in with an email and a password for accessing the API. There are libraries that do what we do in class, probably also better and support more than lights. Like for example, this one, it's quite updated and it, it allow you to change color U brightness and saturation of a lamp with the real, we can say, algorithm. And I would like to remind you that this is a, another example that is already on, uh, on GitHub that uses the same rest.py method that we created right now. It's identical, but uh, connect to this other, we can say, network. So you see that, for example, here, the URI is different because it's, it's similar REST, it's something that looks like REST, it's not really REST, these APIs. And this is another um, home automation, we can say network, that we will not see in class, but you have an example is identical in working in the way working than the Philips U, and it provides, it's here. We can also give you, if you needed, uh, um, the same hardware and software, we can say, of this uh, platform to connect with this home automation uh, network that are metered plugs, a sensor, and light lamps, and something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's equivalent. And I would like only to 
show you that if you look on the website, we are almost done with the lecture. With the lecture, not with the work. You notice that this all, all, all read, uh, except this one, that will be three hours, uh, this one, that will be a little bit more than three hours, and uh, these are, this is what we did today, and this is related to the Android uh, whatever, and there is still one lab that you need to, to do, and so this, is mean, this means that you accept the deliverables all the, and the, the final uh, pitch, we can say, all the other hours will be devoted to your work group in Ladispe, and then we stop probably quite uh, often, quite, quite soon, to come here in the other room. And so we are ending the, so you see that it starts a lot of supervised work group here, supervised work group, supervised group, supervised work group. All these are our that we don't, we don't do a lecture here, but there are hours in Ladispe that you are free to go and work on your project. This one, also the other supervised work group before. So we are towards the end of the lecture and in the beginning of the, the work from more from your side, more hour dedicated to the work on your side. Just to, to wrap up the, where we are in this calendar. So I will stop here and we will see next week and have a good holiday for tomorrow. Thank you.